allowing the first chapter of my course about Sveshnikov variation in Sicilian defense. Today we are going to see two practical examples in which I would like to show you the most important ideas and the most typical ideas in that uh, variation in Sicilian defense. They are not uh, fully connected with our repertoire because uh, some variations will be a little bit different than in the games we, we are going to see in a moment. But uh, this is uh, not uh, an issue because uh, the general character of play will be the same. Both uh, games uh, will be from Gary Kasparov with uh, Black, uh, so I think that there is uh, no better example than to watch uh, his games. And the first uh, game will be against uh, Alexey Shirov, played in, in Linares in 2002. So definitely the top level game, and let's uh, have a look how the game proceeded. CD4, Knight D4, Knight F6, Knight C3, and E5. This is obviously the starting uh, position of the uh, Sveshnikov uh, variation. Black uh, voluntarily gives up the d5 uh, square. Of, co of course, it has some drawbacks, but uh, generally, as we are going uh, to see, there are very good uh, dynamic uh, prospects, and uh, they uh, fully give. Uh, they definitely gives uh, give some uh, good compensation. Knight db5, this is uh, the most uh, common response and the main move. Of course, some other moves uh, here are also possible. Knight f5, knight f3, knight b3, we are all going uh, to see in next chapters. d6, bishop g5, a6, knight a3, b5. This is uh, still very typical play for Sveshnikov, so I'm not uh, going to elaborate uh, too much at that stage. Bishop f6, one of the possible moves here for white. Gf6, knight d5, f5. This is again very typical play for Sveshnikov. As I said, I am not going to right now to focus on the theory and on the opening stage. I just want to show you the character of play in that variation. Bishop b5, one of the possible tries for white, but definitely not the most dangerous. A b5, knight b5. Of course, uh, white would like to play knight uh, to c7 from d or from b and to take that uh, rook on a8, uh, but uh, unlucky for him, it is of course black to move and he has a lot of uh, different uh, ways. One of them is uh, rook a4, which uh, was uh, played in the game, but also quite interesting move is the move bishop b7. I, I am mentioning this move because this is the suggestion of uh, Stockfish and this uh, definitely can be tried. And uh, this is uh, very rarely seen in uh, practice uh, games, in practical game. So I think that uh, definitely it should be tried in next games. Knight bc7, king d7, knight a8. Here white also has some alternative, which is move uh, queen h5. This move uh, aims not to take immediately the rook on a8, but to launch uh, some interesting uh, play against black's king, who is uh, definitely in some uh, danger, just to mention that uh, right now queen f5 would be a killer. But uh, again, it is black to move and he can just play knight e7. Queen f7, again, of course, uh, white is not taking that rook because uh, knights on c7 and d5 looks uh, quite strong. Rook c8, and here right now a little trick, knight e8. Of course, uh, white can chase uh, black's uh, king even more, but uh, king c6 and uh, the king here is surprisingly safe, and there are no real threats, and uh, of course uh, one of the knights from d5 or from c7 will be taken in next move. For instance, castle queenside and after rook c7, it is already black who is just winning. So knight <coughs> e8, of course uh, this is some nice trick, based on uh, if uh, black takes queen e8, then knight f6 winning the queen. <coughs> so rook c6 is a good move here. a4, white is trying to push uh, that uh, pawn mass uh, on uh, queen side. But of course it uh, just uh, looks uh, look, uh, too slow, and of course it is also too, too slow. 
Luck has enough time to consolidate his pieces with king c8, of course again with queen e8 then knight f6. Knight b4 and we simply ignore that threat of uh, taking on c6 with king b8. White is also not uh, interested in taking that uh, rook because if uh, knight c6 then bishop c6 and coordination of uh, black's minor pieces is just very very good. Rook c5, castle kingside, bishop h6. Position is uh, definitely very very complicated, uh, but of course it is uh, black who is at least a piece up, so this is uh, definitely some good uh, thing about that position. Uh, of course king on b8 might be a little bit uh, exposed, but at that, uh, at that stage it is uh, impossible to create any, any threats. So I think that the assessment of that position should be that this is just, an, uh, just a messy position without any advantage for both sides. So let's uh, return a little bit and let's uh, have a look at a little bit more obvious uh, move, which is of course knight a8. Bishop a8, castle king side, knight e7. Of course, uh, white right now has to do something with that uh, knight because right now there is a threat of taking on d5 and if e d5 then the king on d7 will feel very safe. And uh, of course, two bishops are better than the rook. So c4 is a good idea. f4. Queen a4, this is uh, one of the possible lines, uh, something else would be f4. As uh, you, you may see, of course, uh, again, the play is becoming very, very sharp and uh, very complicated. ef3, queen f3, f5, queen a3, king c8. Again, this uh, king is just uh, hoping for some shelter on the queen side, when, where he is going to feel very, very safe. Rook f3, and right now just to look uh, which uh, piece is uh, right now out of play. Of course it is uh, the rook, so rook g8, rook d1, rook g7, just to defend this uh, pawn on h7. Right now uh, every move uh, costs and every, every move is uh, very important, so both sides has to be very very precise. Again this position is unclear and it is uh, really messy, but I think that this is definitely in the spirit of Sveshnikov. Alright, and if uh, queen a4, right now we are going to see some amusing draw. This is a perpetual check because both sides simply cannot uh, do anything else. And of course, when we are playing with black pieces, the draw is uh, always uh, not, not, a, not a bad result. If you are playing against a weaker opponent, of course, you have a lot of uh, chances to, to not go for this line and not to force a draw. This is of course one of the su suggestion of, of me, bishop b7. Anyway, Gary Kasparov tried here the move rook a4, which is uh, the most popular option and simply looks good. b4, just to cover this uh, e4 pawn. Queen h4. Rook b4, this move is uh, definitely more popular and uh, this is just a decent option and this is for sure sufficient for an equal game. Gary Kasparov decided not to sacrifice, uh, not to give back uh, an exchange, but he plays uh, the move queen h4, which is also not a bad option. Castle king side, rook g8, f4. Okay, this move uh, looks uh, quite uh, risky, but uh, in fact uh, this position is already quite uh, good for black if uh, white wants to not be worse, then already he has to be very careful and to play, play very precisely. Let's have a look at some possible alternatives for white here. <coughs> One of them is the move c4, then f4, of course, uh, the rook uh, on a4 hangs, uh, <coughs> but uh, this uh, this is just a draw. Let's have a look. Uh, if g3, if white uh, wants not to immediately take a draw, then rook b4, knight b4, fg3, and again, this is just a perfect well check. This is just a draw, of course. And if uh, queen a4, this is even more obvious draw after rook g2, 
White cannot, of course, play king h1 because he would be mated on h2, so king g2. Queen g4, king h1. Queen f3, king g1. And again, black is just giving perpetual check. So right now, white already had a chance to just uh, force a draw after c4. And if he wishes to continue the fight with a move f3, which looks a little bit better than the move f4, this move simply looks uh, risky to me. Then king d8, quite a good uh, prophylaxis. Again c4, rook a6 and a4. This is a typical idea in that uh, line for white. He wants to make uh, use of that impressive pawn mass on queenside. Knight e7. If uh, rook g6, uh, of course the idea behind that move is to defend uh, the d6 pawn even more with a rook. Rook a2, of course also white wants to make some prophylaxis. The pawn on g2 is right now defended from the rook on a2. <coughs> Bishop h6, g3, knight e7, c5, with a very complicated and a uh, very messy position. I am not uh, going to tell you who is better in that uh, position. As I said, uh, this uh, requires some uh, practical tests. Stockfish thinks that uh, position is approximately equal, and uh, I can say that this uh, should be true. And if knight uh, e7... Knight bc3, just returning with a knight, and again this pawn mass is, uh, is ready to, to start rolling. fe4, b5, knight d5, knight d5, rook a7, a5, and f5. The rook is uh, ready to transfer to g7 to put some even more pressure on king side. But again, the position remains uh, very complicated. Of course, this counterplay on queen side is uh, very real. And of course, uh, both sides has to be very careful and uh, not to lose in one move. Because uh, one mistake can, of course, cost immediately the game. All right, let's uh, return to the game. Uh, Shirov played uh, f4. Of course, Alexey Shirov is uh, very well known for his uh, sharp play and uh, at, uh, for his skills in, in uh, complicated positions. And he wants to play as uh, sharp as possible, and this is why he is opening the position even more with f4. But as I mentioned here in that particular case, this is not the best option. King d8, c3. Maybe white should uh, try here the move uh, queen d2, so that after f4, f5, rook a6, uh, this is a strange uh, looking move, but of course it uh, has some point in playing that, because right now white is ready just to penetrate the queen side uh, with a queen from c3, so this move definitely makes some sense. Just to mention, for instance, that if knight e5, then, <coughs> then queen c3. And uh, black is simply helpless against that threat uh, of queen c7. And if uh, bishop d7, this is an alternative to the move for rook a6. This is, of course, also possible and playable. Rook a d1, knight e5. Queen c3, bishop c6. Right now we see the point behind uh, playing the move uh, bishop d7. Bishop from c6, uh, of course, covers the square c7. And right now we are going to see some fantastic line, queen e5. Of course, this is absolutely a stunning move. d5, knight, b6. It looks like that uh, black's uh, king uh, can be mated at some point. Let's have a look. Of course, if king e7, knight c8, king e8, knight c7. Very surprisingly, black's king is mated. The same happens after king e8, because then knight c7, king e7, knight c8. I've, I have to say that uh, those variations are really fantastic, and uh, this is just the spirit of Sveshnikov. So bishop d6 is uh, an obvious uh, defense. Right now after rook d6, king... Oh, sorry. After rook d6, king e7, rook c6... There is a perfect compensation for the missing queen, but after e3, white of course has to just force a draw because uh, that uh, push of the e-pawn 
simply secures uh, some, some good chances for black. Absolutely fantastic draw and fantastic variations. Alright, let's uh, return, let's uh, have a look at the move for rook a6. Knight d6, bishop d6, e d6. And uh, here the position uh, will become a little bit uh, more calm because after queen g5, the position simplifies uh, a lot. Rook d5, b a6, bishop a6, rook f7, e3. This is an approximate uh, equality. Of course, uh, this uh, pawn on e3 is uh, very dangerous, but uh, white has enough resources just to stop, uh, stop that uh, push. The most probable outcome is uh, that uh, black will just take uh, those pawns on d6, c2 and a2, and uh, white will sacrifice uh, his uh, one of his rooks for the bishop and the pawn from e3, and this will be just an obvious draw. So I think that uh, queen d2 would uh, secure some better chances to white. Still c3 is of course uh, not a losing move. <coughs> rook a6, of course uh, this uh, rook on a4 was under attack, so black has to move. a4, but right now this is simply too slow and this is uh, some imprecise move. Knight bc7 was, uh, was just a better chance. After rook a7, b5, again this idea of rolling some pawn mass on queen side. Queen g4, an invitation to go for some endgame, which would be of course much better for black, so white declines that offer with queen d2. Rook c7, bc6, white doesn't want to take that rook on c7 with that knight from d5, because this minor piece is simply be better than this rook currently. bc6, rook c6, knight f6, but uh, finally it is uh, the right time to take uh, one of the rooks. fe5, queen g7, ef5, queen e5, the game seems balanced and uh, this should be approximate equality, but of course still there is a plenty of play and all of the results are here possible. Alright, as I mentioned, a4 is definitely not the best choice from white. fe4, but right now f5 is just a losing mistake. Still there was a chance for white after rook a2. But after bishop g4, queen b1, knight e7, it becomes uh, clear that uh, white misplayed something and it is right now black who is just better. Bishop f5, queen f3 takes, takes bishop e6. Queen b7, bishop a2, of course uh, white can try to give uh, some checks, but uh, black is not forced to take that uh, draw. After queen a6, bishop e7, it looks like that uh, black's coordination is uh, quite good, and of course he's just a bishop up. But of course still it is uh, far from end, of course black is better, but nothing still that much terrible than what happened in the game. f5 is a completely bad idea. Bishop b7, rook a2, e3. Right now there is no real compensation for the missing piece, and there is also no counterplay against black's king, so this is quite an easy end for black. Rook e1, knight b4. Kari Kasparov is not hesitating, he is just taking his chance and starting some powerful counterplay. Bishop h6, just look at the unleashed power of black's bishops. King h1, bishop e3, of course it was impossible to defend that knight because then th there will be a catastrophe on g2, where bishop e3, queen e2, rook c6, of course if queen e3, then queen e3, rook e3, and mate on c1. So a5, queen b4, black is simply grabbing some material. Knight d6, rook d6, queen e3, at least one of the bishops are taken. But queen d4, of course if queen d4, then rook d4 or even e d4 and there is no chance for white. Queen c1, queen d5, and again this weak spot on g2 uh, is a big issue, and this is why Alexei Shirov simply resigned. 
All right, so this was a very nice game from uh, Gary Kasparov. Definitely, he unleashed uh, the potential of uh, Sveshnikov variation. Very dynamic uh, play, and uh, what uh, to say more, very good game from Gary Kasparov. All right, let's uh, move on to the second game. Again, uh, as, of course, as I mentioned, uh, Gary Kasparov with black pieces. And if white, it is Judith Olgar. The game took place again in 2002. Let's move on to the starting position. Again, bishop g5, a6, knight a3, b5, bishop f6, gf6, knight d5, bishop g7. Uh, I, as I mentioned, I am not going to talk too much about the theory in that uh, chapter, but uh, here is, it is the moment when I would like to stop. Just to mention, f5 is a much more popular option and uh, this will be analyzed in uh, details in next uh, chapters. Anyway, after bishop g7 the character of play doesn't change much and this is why I wanted to show you this game. In this chapter we are not uh, focusing, we are focusing on general ideas in Sveshnikov and not too much on theory. So bishop g7, this is the choice of Gary Kasparov. Very logical, simply developing, uh, simply developing move. C3, f5, bishop d3, and knight e7. Some other move here is the move uh, bishop e6. Then after queen h5, castle e f5, bishop d5, f6. Of course, uh, black uh, didn't win a piece because he cannot just play queen f6 because queen h7 would be quite embarrassing. So e4, just to close that uh, diagonal, and after fg7, rook e8, this is some forced uh, variation also tried in practice. As I mentioned, this is not the subject of this uh, chapter, but I just wanted to show you some variation. Knight e7 was uh, the choice of Gary Kasparov. Knight e7, queen e7. Castle king eight. Ef5, then e4. Bishop e2, castle, knight c2, bishop f5, castle, king h8, this is definitely fine for black, he is ready to start some play on the g-file. Alright, castle, king side, castle, king side from black 2, knight c2 and f4. This is of course a big uh, commitment and uh, the, big, uh, the big idea um, because of course right now this, uh, those white uh, light squares in uh, black's camp are going to be really weak. But of course on the other hand uh, black will have very good uh, potential to start some attack on the king side. Some other move would be here, the move uh, d5. Let's have a look. Of course uh, white has two different options, if e d5 then e4. Rook e1, rook d8, bishop f1, bishop b7, a4, rook d5, queen h5, ba4, rook a4, some quite uh, a long uh, variation. After rook b4, bishop c8, this is an approximate equality. Of course, uh, black has some good uh, things in that position, but also some weaknesses. And if ef5, which uh, looks uh, slightly better than e4, Bishop e2, rook d8, of course d5 was hanging, so black cannot regain the pawn immediately on f5. a4, ba4, rook a4, bishop f5, knight d4, queen f6, and here it is uh, an option for white to simplify. Queen g6, and right now if uh, white wishes to take on f5, then queen f5. And this uh, pawn uh, being pawned down is irrelevant because, of course, there is an opposite colored bishops and this is quite an easy equal game for black. Alright, Gary Kasparov didn't want to go for such a dry position. He wants to attack on king side and this is why he played the move f4. a4, the right decision from Judith Polgar. He wants to start some counterplay on queen side ba4, rook a4, queen g5, f3. To me this uh, doesn't look like the best uh, decision. I think that uh, playing uh, quite bravely and not pushing the pawns on king side with a move queen e2 was the best decision. 
Let's have a look. Rook b8. If a5, then b4. Bishop h3, f3. Right now, of course, black is not losing the pawn, but I think that such a dry position is not in Gary Kasparov's taste. I think that after b5, white is slightly better, but black should be able to hold. And if rook b8, then knight e1. This is a very important maneuver of white's knight. He is going to land on f3 to block that potential of black. Queen h5 and c4. This is some good attempt from white. Bishop b7, rook e1. This should guarantee some edge in sharp position for white, but uh, for sure it is still not that easy to play such position. But I think that it would guarantee some better chances to white than the move f3. Bishop f6, bishop c4, king h8. Obviously, Garry Kasparov is not wasting time on defending that uh, pawn on d6, because, uh, of course, if uh, white would take that pawn, this uh, would end uh, very badly for him, because that attack on king side will be very fast. So, rook f2, bishop e7. This is uh, the important uh, moment. Uh, I think that this is one of the possible moves, but uh, bishop d8 might be even a better option here. Of course, there is a threat of playing bishop b6, so white has to go from the spin with king h1. Rook g8, rook b4. This strange looking move has uh, quite an obvious idea. Uh, white doesn't want to let uh, black's bishop to go on this diagonal a7, g1. So this is the idea. Here it is possible uh, actually to take that pawn on f7. Of course, it looks uh, very risky. But in fact, uh, white uh, still can defend such position. Knight before rook g6 with some very good uh, threats against white's king. Of course, the big threat is to play rook h6 and rook h2. Alright, and if uh, rook b4, which uh, looks a little bit more safe, then a5. Rook b3, queen h5, rook d2, and d5. We are going to see that idea in the game. Uh, here it also works quite good. It looks uh, strange, but let's have a look at some possible lines. If ed5, then rook g6. Right now we are seeing some very strong attack against white's king on h1. d6, rook h6. Queen g1, of course, the only move. Bishop h4, d7. Bishop d7, bishop f7, this is the only move, of course, rook d7 is losing after bishop f2, bishop f7, queen h4, and of course, white is going to lose his queen. So, bishop f7, this is the only move which uh, saves white. Rook b7, and this, uh, this is going to be a quite uh, long uh, forced variation, let's have a look. Queen a2, takes, takes, takes. Queen b2. And here I think that the best decision for white is just to force a draw after rook d8, takes, takes, and this is of course just a perpetual check. Again, very messy position, very complicated, uh, but uh, of course, again, both sides have to be very precise. And if bishop d5, of course this allows uh, black's uh, rook from a6 to go to the king side and to help with an attack. Queen g1, rook h6, bishop b7, an attempt, of course, to exchange one of the deadly bishops. Bishop d5, the play is uh, very messy. Stockfish assessment of that position is uh, that uh, this position is equal. Of course, uh, this uh, looks uh, very, this sounds uh, very strange, because uh, you should, you should uh, think that one of the uh, sides is going to win. But uh, this is of course his assessment, he finds some very good defensive resources. My assessment will be that this position is just messy. Anyway, bishop e7 is still a good move. Knight b4, this is uh, probably the losing mistake. Knight b4, this is a bad idea. King h1 was essential just to go away from this uh, pin on diagonal again. After queen h5, rook d2. 
bishop h4. Again, black is attempting to mate the white's uh, king. Queen f1. If uh, rook d6, uh, this again looks uh, very, very risky, but uh, here it is not that bad. After rook g8, rook d2, bishop g3, queen g1, queen g1. rook g5, the pressure is uh, very strong. Of course, the threat is just to transfer the rook to h file. But in fact, still it is uh, white has some defensive resources, and uh, but of course this pressure is very very annoying. So let's uh, return and uh, let's have a look at some better option, which is of course queen f1. The point behind that move is that after bishop g3, white has time to play h3. Of course, right now bishop h3 doesn't work because queen from f1 will defend this pawn on h3. So rook g8, bishop d5, rook b8, knight b4, uh, rook b4 of course, takes knight b4, bishop h4, queen c4, rook f8, and again I would assess that position as uh, unclear, but it uh, right now it is uh, not that messy as uh, previous positions, so I can say that this is just an equal game. Right now after knight b4, it, uh, after d5, very good idea from Garry Kasparov, the game becomes uh, very good for black. Of course, uh, bishop c5 and uh, bishop a8 is again very very bad idea. Uh, oh sorry, let's uh, have a look what was the better idea here for white. It was of course queen f1. Rook b8, knight d3. If uh, king h1, I would uh, just to mention that uh, right now of course black is not taking that rook on f2. Because this powerful bishop from c5 is uh, simply better than this passive rook on f2. Knight d3 and again bishop e3. Very nice play. Rook c4. If uh, rook e2 here, then rook h6 is a good idea. Knight f2, queen h5, queen g1, rook g8. And this pressure is simply very very annoying and this is just lost position for white. And if uh, rook c4, queen h4, rook b4, takes, takes, and here it is the right time to grab some material, and of course bishop d7, this is completely lost position for white. So let's have a look at the move uh, knight d3. Again, of course, we are not uh, hesitating, we have some time, we do not, uh, there is no need to take immediately on f2, bishop e3 is just a strong idea. Rook b4 takes takes, f5, king h1 takes takes, f4, bishop e4, and at least uh, white can still try, this is for sure better than what happened in the game, because bishop a8 is just uh, losing on this spot after rook g8. There is a very simple threat of mating on g2 due to the spin on a7 and to, uh, to g1 diagonal, king f1, bishop f2. King e2, of course uh, taking on f2 would end uh, with a disaster after king g2. So king e2 and uh, white is trying to escape from that powerful pressure. Bishop d5, queen h2. King c4, at least uh, white's uh, king uh, found uh, some surprising shelter on uh, c4. It um, looks uh, quite funny to me, but uh, of course it is uh, still not that easy to uh, finish the game. Especially that uh, rook g1 probably is not the best uh, idea. I think that uh, bishop d7 was much more simple. Let's have a look. After rook a6, queen b2, rook a8, uh, white is trying to simplify the position, but of course it is too late. If uh, rook d6, then it comes a stunning idea, bishop d4. What is, behind, uh, what is the point behind that move, of course? Rook b8. Again, white is simply helpless against that mass threats. Bishop c6, rook c6, queen b4, and black will just queen the queen, and of course, a game. And if white is simplifying, then as I mentioned, this doesn't help much, because bishop d2, queen c2, takes, takes, and uh, black is happy with that uh, endgame. Of course, this h5 pawn will decide the game. I think that this was much more simple than uh, rook g1, but of course this is still not a mistake. 
Queen d3, I think that uh, Queen b3 was uh, the move which would put some more resistance. After Queen h3, Knight d3, Queen d7, Queen b4, King g7, King b3, f6, Rook a5, h5, Queen b8. Again, uh, White has some small chances, but of course it simply looks uh, very bad for him. Alright, let's return to the game, queen d3, and here Kasparov found a very nice idea, bishop h3. Of course, uh, there is a direct uh, threat of winning the queen after bishop f1, so king b3, bishop f1, queen c2, again, and again, black is just happy with that endgame because it is completely lost for white. c4, bishop e2, rook a6, right now, of course, uh, this is uh, very easy. To win such a position, because, and I am not going to uh, speak too much about that position. Let's just have a look. Knight e5, of course, this is just losing uh, the knight, but it was just nothing better here in that position. Rook e1, rook f7, king g6, c5, rook e2, f3, bishop c4, rook e4, bishop d5, rook f4. Of course, white could just give up a couple of moves uh, before. But he did, uh, did it here, the judge just uh, did it here. Alright, so this was again uh, some very nice game from Gary Kasparov. I think that those two examples uh, from the Sverchnikov were really impressive. And I think uh, that uh, playing in such dynamic style with black uh, pieces is just a dream of every player who plays Sicilian. Alright, so this was uh, chapter number one. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.